In this video, you will learn how to structure a social marketing plan with a framework that I've used working with global and Fortune 500 brands over the last seven years. Hey YouTube fam, welcome back to Market & Hustle. My name is Zarin Sidhu and on this channel we simplify digital marketing so that you can accelerate your business growth. Now there are three fundamental approaches you can use for social marketing. The first one is 100% organic where you're posting content organically on Facebook or Instagram or whatever channel. The second one being you're just doing paid advertising. Now, my recommendation is that any complete social media strategy needs to have a blend of tactics that are organic, that are content focused, and that are paid where you're using ads to amplify and reach audiences beyond your existing followers. Now, for the purpose of this video and us talking about this framework that you can utilize, we are going to focus on the organic side of things because the paid side of things will take many, many videos to cover. In terms of an agenda, we're first going to talk about your business and marketing goals because these are going to be instrumental in order to create a plan and a strategy because they need to ladder out up to some kind of business outcome. Once we know what the business outcome is and what are the marketing activities that we can track, then it becomes very easy to create a strategy for the platforms you're going to be using, then also a strategy for the types of content you're going to be putting on those platforms, and that would be fleshed out within what we call content pillars. Now, if you're following along in this video and planning to take notes, that's great, but I also do want to give you a heads up that there's a free downloadable that you can get. Uh, I'm going to put the link below in the description. It's a PowerPoint template that you can use as a worksheet to take everything you're going to learn in this video and fill it out there so that you have it all centralized in one plan. So to kick off the first point of aligning your business goals with your marketing goals, I want to give you this example of Billy, who he is running an Airbnb business and it's on the beach. It's a really nice Airbnb. And his goal is he wants to 2x his revenue. He's been doing Airbnb for a couple of years and this year he really wants to ramp this up. Now he thinks, hey, why not use social media marketing to like really help this business grow? I see a ton of people going viral and, you know, getting tons and millions of views on videos. Why not use social media and really get my Airbnb business, you know, to the next level? Now, the business goal is to 2x his revenue, but the way he does that with Airbnb in particular is that he needs to get bookings. Book nights equals money. And this is what we would call a lagging indicator because it's an outcome that you would see later on as a consequence of, of business activities happening. So this is a, so, something that you could track long term. In the short term, the way you get bookings is with marketing activities. And this is what we would call a leading indicator. And these are important because these are things you can track real time on a day to day basis where you might not necessarily be getting bookings every single day, but there's marketing activities you're doing that if you continue to do them, they're indicative of future sales. And this is very important for us to understand. So the first question you want to ask yourself is what is your business goal? And it's super important that it's a business goal that can be solved with marketing, such as growing your revenue, growing your profitability, um, you know, maybe entering new markets with your products and services. Not every business goal can be necessarily solved with marketing. So it's very important that you think about this and that you're also very specific with what your actual business goal is and that it's realistic. The next thing you want to do is then, you know, reflect and analyze what could potentially be a leading indicator of that, that you can then tie to your marketing so you can establish some marketing goals. Um, again, this is going to be very different for every business. If you have a business where you're selling, you know, a very expensive service that's like, I don't know, five to ten thousand dollars. Maybe you might have a strategy where you get people to go to your website and then you get them to call you or submit their information and then you call them. So maybe phone calls becomes a leading indicator of a future buyer. So it's going to be very different for every business. But essentially, this is like the bare bones structure you want to understand business goal and what are the marketing activities you could correlate and now you want to put it into goals. Now I want to take this and crystallize it because I know this could be a little abstract and I want to give you an example in the next slide. So we're going to put everything into a statement for Billy and this is what it's going to look like. So Billy wants to drive 2x business revenue growth by increasing website traffic and book nights by 120%. 
So now I realize we've added some new information that you weren't previously previewed to, and this is part of the strategy that we're building for Billy's Airbnb business to get him to his business goal because you know, we know for a fact that in order to get more money, he needs to get more book nights. And the only way to book is through the Airbnb app or, or the website. So we need to get traffic in that direction. And I wanna break this down for you. So the business goal, it's pretty clear. 2X business revenue growth. The marketing goal is book nights. And that's the goal because we can measure it and that's the closest thing related to revenue. And then the leading indicator here is website traffic. If we don't get anybody to the Airbnb listing, no one's going to book. So as we increase website traffic, we know X percentage of people are more likely are likely to book. And then that's how we get to our business revenue growth. So as you can see, we've connected all these things. And this is super important because as you build out your plan, you're going to need to track key performance indicators. And if you've done a good job of putting time and energy into thinking about what your goal is, for your business and marketing goal, you're gonna be tracking the right key performance indicators. Now, what does this have to do with social media? Well, we talked about we needed to get bookings and a leading indicator of getting bookings was getting people to the website. Well, what better tool exists in 2021 as I make this video to drive a horde of audiences that don't know about a product or a service to discover it, to get interested, and then to purchase it? Yes, you're right, social media. You can drive traffic from these different channels and you know, obviously as long as it's relevant content and you're getting the right people to your Airbnb listing or to your website, X percentage of them are gonna convert. Um, so this is sort of like the bare bones of the strategy. It's use social media marketing to drive qualified website traffic that increase, increases book nights. And I personally like putting strategies, you know, into statements like you saw in the previous slide, because it sort of helps me clarify what am I trying to do here? Because everything else is going to be built, you know, upon this strategy, upon the statement. Now, let's talk a little bit about platforms. So now that we know what we're trying to achieve in terms of an end business outcome, and we have sort of this idea of how we're going to uh, measure this and how we're going to make this happen, you want to start talking about, well, what are the platforms that you're going to be using to create and publish content? Now, some people might say, hey, you should be on every social platform. Other people might say, hey, no, you just need to be on Instagram or TikTok because they're the most relevant. And it's, it's going to really matter in terms of who the actual audience is that you're trying to get. If you're trying to go after, like, for example, we know LinkedIn is the platform for professionals. Um, we know Instagram is a platform that besides having over a billion monthly active users, it's a very visually driven platform. So if you have a visual service, it'll probably do well there. We know Facebook is where people go to connect with family and friends. So these are the things you want to be thinking about in terms of deciding where you want to maximize your energy. Now, if you have the creative resources to be on every platform, great, do it. But if you're starting off, um, you know, a side hustle or a business and you have limited resources, you really wanna focus your energy and just do a couple of them right. And you might even wanna consider uh, having two to three platforms that you're actively creating content for, and the rest of the platforms, you're kinda of just repurposing the existing content when you're starting off. And one thing that's super important, again, is to think what is the purpose of each platform? Because it's kind of like, if you, if you you know, if you're, you, if you're, <laughs> uh, if you watch linear TV, because I, I know a lot of people you know, are, aren't watching linear TV anymore, but this is one example I would always think about. If you have MTV and VH1 and BET, three different channels, and you're, you're literally, you go to one channel and they're, they have a show, and then you go to the next channel and they, they're playing the same exact show, and then you go to MTV and it's the same show, why would, you, why would you go to those three different channels? Why would you go to MTV and BET and VH1 if they all play the same content? there would be no reason to do that, right? So each social media platform should have a different purpose, and that purpose should be aligned to the behaviors being exhibited by people when they're using the platform, and that's what we're gonna get next to, uh, into in the next slide. So you want to align the buyer's journey with the platform behavior. Now, if you haven't heard this concept, the buyer's journey is a decision-making process that people go through. It's often represented by the sales funnel, which you see an example on the screen. Um, and it's the, the, the 
decision-making process people subconsciously go through when they're when they're going to make a purchase decision they go from awareness generally to consideration to conversion so if you're not aware of a brand you're not going to buy it if you're not aware you need something you're not going to go look for it once you do realize you you know you want to take a vacation or you know your tv broke or your lap your iphone screen broke and you need to fix it then you're going to go out there and do some research and you will consider uh, a few brands after you've done some evaluation right pricing how close is it to me etc cetera, etc cetera. and then you will be likely to buy so i want to use this as a framework and this is what i've done with many of the brands that i've worked with and this is just kind of like the standard thing you do um, i'm going to sort of tweak it here and i'm going to give you a different name of this so let's just say someone that's not looking for airbnb in this example so they're not in the market they're not looking to buy this um my strategy to reach these people is reach users who are in a discovery mindset and create awareness of you know the airbnb and the city the area that the airbnb is in because just because someone's not looking for something doesn't mean you can't sell it to them if they're in a discovery mindset which oftentimes when we're spending two to three hours a day on social media we're open to discover however certain platforms might align a little bit more with that behavior and we'll talk about that on the following slide now for the in-market audience people who are planning to travel in the next like three to four months uh, or two to three months here, here the platform strategy is reach users who are actively researching that actual location. Now we know people are not gonna go on Google or YouTube um, and just type in like uh, Tom, uh, Billy's Airbnb in, you know, B this Cape Town or Beach Town, whatever, like, cause no one knows Billy's Airbnb. This is the whole point while we're creating a social marketing strategy for it. Um, but there's gonna probably be people searching the town or the city um, or doing general searches about top beach vacation destinations so that's actually an opportunity and again you know i'll show you some examples on the following slide but i just want to show you this whole process now for the people who have already become customers um the retention buyer stage is super important and often one that people completely forget about a lot of times people are spending so much energy in uh acquisition and getting new customers that they totally forget about the ones that they already have which is crazy because it's a given rule that, you know, a small business, 80% of their revenue is going to come from 20% of the audience and getting repeat purchasers, shortening that buying cycle because someone's already done business with you is a phenomenal way to like grow a business. So from a retention angle, you know, this audience knows you, they've done business, they've stayed at their Airbnb. You just want to stay top of mind to drive loyalty and get them to, to maybe come back again or refer your location to some of their friends. Now, aligning the platform to audience behaviors. If you told me, Zarin, you can only pick three social media platforms and you can only use one for each different phase of the funnel. Mind you, I changed non-in-market to discovery just because I thought it was a little bit more um, useful in, in this slide to present it this way. I would say TikTok. TikTok is a phenomenal platform that's been growing immensely with over getting close to probably a billion users globally, which is insane because it took Instagram about 10 years to do that. Um, to capture people in market that have intent, YouTube, second largest search engine in the world, number one largest video search engine. So I know people are gonna go in here and actually type in things like top 10 beach destinations or tips for Airbnbs. And that's those are signals that can be captured with content. And then from a retention angle, Instagram. Instagram's like your digital gallery of your business. But I wanna take this one step further and show you how I would turn, I would create some content pillars, which is the themes of content that you would create and publish on your social channels, it's just to crystallize why I chose these. Now, I'm not saying that you should only use Instagram for retention. That's not what I'm saying at all. You could definitely use Instagram to get new customers. And you could use it in the discovery side of the business um, of the buyer's journey as well and you know there's probably more platforms that i can include here but i just wanted to show you a very simple example to give you this clarity of how i'm thinking about it so now when it comes to content strategy and pillars there's two questions you want to ask yourself here first is what type of content will be created and published and if i can go one level deeper i would say 
what is the content that the audience needs, requires at the different stages of their journey. When they're not in market, they're, you know, in a discovery mindset potentially, but they're not looking for this. You want to say and show them different kind of content than when someone's researching this and looking for, you know, information on YouTube or Google, um, they're at a different level. So you have to say different things at different places. And then again, you want to be thinking about how this content aligns back to these strategic marketing goals, just to make sure that everything ladders back to getting more bookings. Now, at this point, you started to flesh out your strategy, but now we need to talk a little bit more about these content pillars and create some themes to them. Um, and on average, I recommend you create three to five different buckets of themes. Now, the first one with TikTok, particularly because it's people who are not looking for this Airbnb, they're not looking for travel. I, I think TikTok is a great place where you can wow people, where you can tease exclusive experiences that even though um, you know you weren't looking to, in this example, go to Mexico, you see something really cool. Like this guy's walking in, um, he's in a restaurant and his feet are actually in water. So the restaurant is half covered by water and that's like the coolest thing ever. I've never seen a restaurant that's has water up to your ankles. So it's a, it's a, interesting experience that then gets a user who wasn't looking at something being like, oh, wait, well, let me see what this business is about. Oh, I've never heard of this place in Mexico. Oh, this looks cool. It gets them interested. Another example I can give you is with YouTube. And this is particularly for that in-market audience that is actively researching, um, you know, travel, but they just haven't made a decision yet. On YouTube is a great place to teach them about things. So sharing travel hacks and guides, that that kind of content is going to do very well um, for that audience because again, they're they're going to go in here and they're going to type in Bali travel guide. And if Billy's Airbnb is in Bali and it's his video showing up, and Billy's telling you all the great things to do in Bali, and oh by the way, he mentions if you need a place to stay, I have an Airbnb. Check out the link in the description. Boom sales after sales and the last example i'll give you from the retention angle is um and again this example i i it's probably not just retention i think it's very normal for someone when they're researching an airbnb or a place to stay they're going to go on instagram before they make the decision and, be, and look at pictures and see what does this place really look like who's been there so instagram is a great place where you can validate it you can show the lifestyle of the people who are visiting your Airbnb. And also, of course, show your Airbnb, show those experiences. If you have user generated content from people that have stayed at your Airbnb, show that content. Um, but again, it's a great opportunity to show the lifestyle, reinforce the image, the idea. So as you can see, you know, for this Airbnb business that's in a beach town, each one of these platforms can be used uniquely different um, in terms of where the buyer is in their different stage from not in market to in market to retention, but also the behaviors that people do on these different platforms. You know, TikTok is something that you don't open to follow your friends, you open to discover content. So that discovery mindset works very well with that woe with them type of content, where Instagram is where we go to see like, are you legit? So validating content, social proofing content can be very, very powerful on that platform. If you want to learn more, I actually have a crash course and I think it's a definite guide for anybody that's looking to take their business to the next level. And if you haven't been seeing good results with your social media marketing and you want to put together a strategy and a plan, this course will actually take you from fundamentals to developing a full fleshed out strategy and a plan. And then we even take it a next level into activation where I'm walking you through different examples of posts. Um, from organic to page, so we cover the spectrum. So I definitely encourage you guys to check that out. I'll put a link below in the description. As always, thanks so much for tuning into Marketing and Hustle, where we simplify marketing so that you can accelerate your business growth. And I'll see you in the next video. Peace.